In this video, we will talk about descriptive statistics and mean plus minus standard deviation and median and intercoded range. And as many of us know, mean and median is a descriptive statistics showed a central tendency of data and standard deviation and intercoded range show variation of data. So let's start with mean plus minus standard deviation. This is an example from a real uh, research, real life research we published in JAMA in, in 2004. And we tried to show delirium as a predictor of mortality in mechanically ventilated patients in the intensive care unit. And uh, today we look at the baseline characteristics table of their paper. And let's look at this Apache as an example. And there were 41 patients who never experienced delirium in ICU, and there are 183 patients who experienced delirium in ICU. So this is a typical baseline characteristic table, and we show uh, mean and standard deviation or percent and frequency of each of baseline characteristics variables. So let's look at this Apache. Apache is a severity score and often used in ICU research, and data are collected at ICU admission. And higher means more severe form of disease or uh, worsening prognosis. So among 183 delirious patients, mean Apache was 25.6. And among no delirious patients, mean Apache was 23.2. By looking at this, and we know patients with delirium were sicker, slightly sicker than patients without delirium. Okay? So we all know how to use mean, right? And, but I want to see how many people know how to use number in parentheses. And this is standard deviation. Okay, so for mean of 25.6, standard deviation was 8.1. What does it mean? Okay, so what is standard deviation? Well, standard deviation is something to tell you variance, right? And how dispersed data are. That I know, uh, but what, how, how do you use this number? Okay, is this number useful? If it's not useful, we shouldn't even put in a paper, right? So let's think how we can utilize this 8.1 when you read a paper. And standard deviation is, in fact, average distance between each data points to the sample mean. And so uh, this is a data from 183 delirious patients. Okay, so this patient Apache is about 33, and this patient Apache is about 38. So higher is worsening prognosis, and the so more likely to die in ICU. And but uh, here there are patients with a low Apache. This patient have Apache of nine. This patient has excellent prognosis. Okay. And so these uh, data points are from each patient. And then you compute the difference, distance from each observation to the mean. Mean of this group is 25.6. Okay, so compute the distance, compute distance. All observations, you compute distance, and then you take average of that distance, which is 8.1. So if the average is bigger, then you might say data are more dispersed and the variance is higher. If the distance is smaller, and you can say the distributions are more narrower. Okay? So standard deviation does show uh, data variation. Okay, so now I know the meaning of standard deviation. So this is average of each of the patients among 183 patients to the mean of Apache, 25.6, okay? So higher is more variation, okay? And there actually is more to it. 
if data are normally distributed, and you can actually interpret standard deviation in this way. So uh, first, you need to compute two times standard deviation. In this case, two times 8.1. Okay, and then you do press minus uh, that from 25.6. So you compute 25.6 plus minus two times 8.1, which is about 16, right? And then that gives this interval. 9.4 to 41.8. So if data are normally distributed, that means uh, centered around the mean and um, balanced. It's nicely balanced, um, bell-shaped distribution. So if data look like this, and you can say 95% of patients Apache score lie between 9.4 to 41.8. So let's see. Do you think there's 85% observation lying between this range? Yeah, it does look like that. So that's the utility of standard deviation. Okay, And you can't forget to multiply by 2. And mean plus minus 1 standard deviation only show 67% of Apache score lie between range of 17, mean plus minus 8.1, so that's 17.5 to 33.7. So this is about 67%, okay? And 67%, and we don't really use it. Um, so what we are looking for is majority of data, 95%. So please don't forget multiplication by two. So let's look at uh, this table again. So now you know how utility of standard deviation. Let's use it. So when you look at baseline characteristic table from now on, and what you do is, well, you you compute 2 times 8.1. Okay? So that is about 16. So what is 25.6 plus minus 16? Actually, it's 16.2. And then you can quickly compute that, right? So that's a 41.8. So you know, 41, uh, in this range, 95% of patients' observation lie. So we say, well, that's true. Yeah. And let's look at the age then. And mean of age in delirium group is 56. So you do 2 times 17, which is 34. What is that? And that's 56 minus 34 is 22. 56 plus 34 is 90. So, you know, yeah, when I enrolled patient, about 95% uh, patient lie in the age of 22 to 90. Yeah, that's right. So if you researcher collected this data, you might feel, you may think that. If you are just reading this paper, say, well, this population is very similar to my patient population, and therefore this paper is worth reading, and, and I might use the result to my practice. Okay? And so, so uh, from now on, and standard deviation does have a meaning, it has nice utility, so let's use that in order to better understand uh, patient background in the paper you're reading. All right. And so let's move on. And this is a table two of their JAMA paper. And this showed average dose of medication, lorazepam, propofol, morphine, and fentanyl, and used 24 hours before delinium assessment in each day. So this means uh, average of 4.8 milligram of lorazepam was used in 24 hours. And standard deviation is 12.8. What does it mean? So again, you do 4.8 plus minus 2 times 12.8. And then you will compute that. What is that? And that is actually uh, minus 20.8 to 30.4. What does it mean, minus? Okay, dose of drug can't be minus, right? So some strange happening in here. Can we say 95% observation falling in this range? No, it can't. I know it cannot be below negative. So uh, this is a pitfall of standard deviation. As we say, standard deviation 
have a meaning if the data are normally distributed. So let's look at this lowest-span data if the lowest-span data is normally distributed. No, okay, this data is from each patient. So you can see cluster, okay, the majority, many patients' data are full. Many patient data is at zero milligram, although there are few patients' data with very high number. So the distribution, if you draw histogram, histogram will look like this. Okay. It's not normally distributed. So in the skewed data, you can't really use mean and standard deviation. And instead, what do we use? We use median and interquartile range. What is a median? Median is a point, okay? So if you order uh, this data from lowest, okay, so this is the number one. We have many zero, so you might have like 50 zero here. Um, if, if you order one to uh, highest, 183, okay? And then 50% uh, is the where middle person is lying, the value of middle person is lying. Is, a, is one milligram, that's the median. So if you count one, two, what is the middle point of 183, which is 92, right? And 90 second persons have a value of one milligram. Okay, so that is median. And what is interquartile range? Interquartile range is a range made of 25th percentile value to 75th percentile value. So, uh, what is 25th uh, of 183? That's what's one quarter, right? So it's about 46 persons. So you count 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, and then 46 is still 0 milligram, okay? And then what is the 75th percentile person? And this person is 46 from, from the end, 46, 100. 30. So you count 1 to 137, and that person's value was 4.25, so it's somewhere here, okay? Median is 1, and intercode range in this data is 0 to 4.25 milligram. Okay. And so instead of using mean and standard deviation for skew data, you must be using median and interquartile range. In fact, you can use median and interquartile range for everything, even normally distributed data. So this is a baseline characteristic table from our later paper. So we're no longer using mean and standard deviation, and we are in fact using median and interquartile range. So let's, let's look at it. In this, this is RCT, and there are 167 patients in intervention group. So median, so if you order uh, youngest to oldest patient in this 167, and middle person, 50th person's age is 60, okay? And then if you look at 25th percentile person's age, it's one quarter from the youngest, right? So that's 48, age 48. And if you look at uh, last one quarter, okay, and the age is 71%, 71 years old. And so uh, even if the data are normally distributed, age are usually uh, normally distributed very well. So you can see middle age is 60 and then uh, top 25% patients age is less than 48 and last 25% uh, patients age is greater than 71 years old. Okay, so it's nothing wrong to use median and interquartile range for normally distributed data. And when data are skewed, and of course, it's better to use median and interquartile range. So in this case, and you know the benzodiazepines, um, lolazepam is in the benzodiazepines, and median is 8. 50% so of people use 8 milligram or less, and 25% people use 4 milligram or less, or 75% patient and use 34 milligram or less, we can say the last 
uh, quarter patient, 25% patient, have doors greater than 34 milligram. So you have a nice utility. You don't have to worry about interquarter range goes negative. So this interquarter range, um, sometimes you might see uh, IQR, people use IQR equal uh, actual length, okay, of 30. So this is 34 minus 4. Okay, instead of put 4 to 34, and some people put 30. Now, I don't really like to use range, actual length of intercorder range. Technically, intercorder range is a range, so 30 is a correct number. Although, when you put the 30, you don't really know. Um, you can't really convert this to a distribution. So it's much better you put 4 to 34 instead of 30. So that's what I'm encouraging people to use. Okay, so here, you can nicely draw a histogram based on this. Yes, there are 50% of patients who use uh, benzodiazepine, 8 mg or less, and then 25% use 4 or less, and 75% and use 34 or less. So histogram probably looks like this. Okay, like that. So you know data are skewed. To, to the left. Probably it's even more skewed like that. So in this video, and we, we learn about mean and standard deviation, median and intercordial range. Mean and standard deviation can only be used for normally distributed data. And although median and intercordial range can use both normal and non-normal data. So if you don't want to worry about which to use one, you might just use median and intercoder range for everything in your paper, and that's perfectly fine.